Hi, it's Craig here again. Uh, January the 2nd, 2019. Uh, little Pullum 4018. Uh, I finally got the parts for it. Now let me get you swung on around here where you can see what's happening. Get my eyes on here so I can see even. Sucks getting old. Can't see nothing without glasses. What we're going to do today, the cylinder right here, I'm going to put it together, put the piston crank bearings, get it mounted into the chassis. Well, here's what it is. It's a little Poulon PP4018 Pro. It says 42C, or 40cc right there. I think is kind of misleading because if you look at the specs here on the chassis I don't know if you can see that but it definitely says 42 cc right there I think Poulon in an effort to keep the costs down on a lot of their saws they misbrand the size of the engine they use the same engine across the right well a uh, wide array of platforms <clears throat> so this possibly could be a 42 cc engine I didn't do the stroke and bore nothing uh, all I done was just ordered parts for it but I do know that a lot of saws across different platforms have the same engine uh, I was able to figure that out so I think in order for them to keep the costs down and, and be able to sell them at a, a cheaper rate for the homeowner they use the same engine in multiple soles and then just label it as, as a different CC even though it's bigger or smaller at some times <clears throat> but what we're doing here today this is a brand new OE uh, Husqvarna cylinder uh, Husqvarna series uh, uh, I knew, this is why I wrote this down because I, I knew I'd forget the Husqvarna series 136, 137, 141, 142 series of saws is very similar in what they use in the Poulin. And, and the newer Poulins are actually manufactured by the same group that Husqvarna is manufactured by, especially their homeowner saws. But um, this come from Husqvarna even though it was a Poulin part number. Uh, this was the original clamshell off the original engine. This is the original crank. It's still good. The wrist pin bearing still decent shape. It's not rough or nothing. So when you're doing this, first things are first. Make sure you put your blockers in. and Make sure you get them in the proper sides. They only, they only go one, one side. That's a little tight right there. That's all the further that one will go in. That just falls in. That's what you're looking for. You want it to, to basically fall right home. And also make sure you get it in the right orientation. You don't want to put it in backwards. Of course it won't allow you to put it in like that. And if you did, the piston wouldn't be able to run up and down anyway. That slides right in. Falls right into place. Make sure you're your feet are where they need to be. Um, get this thing opened up here. There we go. This was the piston that come with the cylinder kit. <clears throat> This is also a, a Husqvarna piston, but it was underneath of a Poulon number. New ring, new wrist pin bearing, two new sir clips. That's everything that's in that bag. Okay, all this has been cleaned up as you can tell. I just took a wire brush on my die grinder, cleaned all that up. Same thing here on the base, cylinder. 
even though it was brand new I just kind of scuffed it up make it nice and bright um, give the 1184 something to bond to give it a little bit something to bite to so I'm going to pause this for just a second I'm going to clean off that piston and wrist pin with brake parts cleaner I'll be right back okay we're back <clears throat> start by putting one of these little sewer clips in. These have no tabs. They're just cut off square. And these will probably give me all kinds of fits. I hate I hate these when they have no little ear on them to grab. Keep your thumb on it, keep it from flying off. Okay, there we go. Looks like that one's all the way seated. Put the um, opening down toward the bottom. Gonna run the pin through the other side here. Maybe. off the tight. Yeah, we're good there. Okay. Make sure you get this on right. <clears throat> As you can see, no marking on the piston top. No arrow. So what you're looking for is the piston, the pin, the locating pin for the piston ring. That always goes toward the intake. Exhaust, intake. So the piston's going into the cylinder like so. This is how the crank sets into the cylinder. This would be setting in the saw like this. Intake side here, exhaust side here. This is your PTO side. This is where your clutch would be. Clutch is always on the right hand side. Piston pin toward the front of the cylinder. Crank sets in like this. So the piston is going to go in the crank just like so. Piston pin would be facing me because that would be the intake side. The threads for the clutch would be on my right side, would be the PTO side. So I'm going to put just a little bit of oil on the wrist pin bearing here. These bearings are an integral part of the wrist or of the rod rather. They're actually pressed in. could probably find a, a new bearing if need be, press this one out and press the new one in, put a little heat on the rod to expand it like you would the case bearings if you didn't have the tools to pull it in. So 
now what I'm looking for is the pin bearing back toward me get it started something here just to kind of tap it on home. Uh, let me pause this again. I'll find something where I can tap this on home. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. What I've got, just a ball-peen hammer, just a drift punch, and I'm not going to hammer on this hard. I'm just going to tap it just enough to send it home. Looks like we're almost up against it. A couple more little taps, we should be home. You heard it change the sound. It went to kind of a, a dead sound instead of a, a hollow sound. We're nice and tied up against that pin. Or not pin, but circlip. My groove is completely exposed there. So now I can grab this one and hopefully we can get it to go home. Just a tad bit of dirt on the end of them needle nose pliers. Again, get your thumb down on there. Right here is why I don't like these. I hope you can see this. See right up there at the top. As I was putting that in, see how I kind of bent that that circlip down a little bit, and I'm gonna to have to pull that out, straighten it up. Well, I don't like using the, the type without the ears. There's nothing to hold on to and then they're easy to bend. Okay, there we go. I don't have my opening on the bottom, but you can see how that's seated in really good now. Get it up there where you can see it. Okay. Okay, the opening's now on the bottom. <clears throat> Ready to put the ring on. Make sure that your cutouts on your ring, there's little notches cut in the ends of the rings, correspond to where the pin is in the piston. This, the notches need to be up because the pin is in the top portion of the, of the ring land. If the pin was to be in the bottom, you'd need the, the notches down toward the bottom. If the pin's right in the center, you probably don't have any notches at all, so it doesn't matter how your ring goes on. But this ring, the notches go up, just like so. And that's the ring when it's in the cylinder. Put a little bit of oil here on the rod bearing. I'll 
I'll do both sides of it. And I'm not putting a whole lot on there. Just a little bit. Now this is a Strato engine. That's what your Strato grooves or ports allows air to get up in to help evacuate the exhaust charge out. <clears throat> these bearings, I'll put just a, a little bit of oil in them too. But these bearings do not press or, or pull into the cylinder. They actually just slide right onto the crankshaft. They're just a slip fit. And what I like to do for the seal because the, the black part of this bearing, this outer rubber piece, let me make sure you can see this. This, this is actually a two-piece bearing. The bearing actually gets pressed into this rubber seal. The outside part of this seals the clamshell design. And then there's your lip seal right there that, that seals the crankshaft. I like to put a little bit of Vaseline on the crankshaft. With these, it gives the seal something when it starts up so you don't burn the seal up. It gives it a little bit of lubrication. But more importantly, I think it allows that seal to slip onto the crank a lot easier. And with, like all the other ones, as you're pushing the bearing on, turn the crank or not turn the crank, but turn the bearing and the seal assembly as you're putting it together. That keeps that um, seal lip from inverting because they do have springs because it's a, a two-lip seal. So it's got a little spring on the back side and you don't want to invert that seal and have that spring pop off. And I'll do the same thing here with the other side. And it doesn't matter which side these seals go on. They don't have a specific side. They're both the same part number. Like I said, these, these bearings and these seals are actually Husqvarna part numbers. Uh, I got them for the 130, again, see here we go, I, I forgot, so I wrote it down. The 136, 137, 141, 142 series of saws. These seals and bearings, that's what these seals and bearings are actually for but it's the same part number over onto the steel side or not steel, excuse me, over onto the pooling side <clears throat> so now I've got the seals on Get a little bit of brake clean here on my rag because I've got some Vaseline on this rubber and when you go to put the 1184 on uh, it won't like the Vaseline because it's a petroleum based product and it'll cause it not to seal up right. do the same thing on the other side and I'll go ahead and clean off the stubs of the crank okay Now it's time to put a little bit of oil in the cylinder. Not a whole lot. You're not wanting so much it drips out. You just want a nice, light, even coat. Just enough to make everything nice and slick and smooth. That's all we're looking for. I put it on the plastic um, shields there, or, or not shields, but inserts. 
all over the cylinder. Then it'll actually come out. Put it on the piston also. Like I said, just a nice light film is all you're looking for here. Wipe the oil off my finger there with the brake clean that I had on my rag. Get the 1184. There is no little round rubber seals that go in here. Some of these come with that little rubber seal. So I'm just going to put a liberal, what I call a liberal amount. Make sure that I fill that groove all the way full of 1184. Stringy. put a little bit down in the bearing pocket here and I'll just take and rub that around with my finger what we're doing here is just trying to seal everything up This is some tacky stuff too. Spread it all over the entire surface area. That way you have even torque. When you go to torque it down, it won't be able to rock or pull to one side. It'll be able to pull down nice and square. You know, do you have to do this? Probably not. But this is how I like to do it. A little bit right there. Get the excess. Now I don't have to worry about this setting up any too fast. It's probably only about 38 to 40 degrees outside right now. So it's going to take a while for that to tack up. But now I'll go and I'll put just a smaller film of 1184 on the cylinder side. And this would be like if I was doing a base gasket delete. That's about the amount that I'm putting on this. Everybody's probably wondering why I'm wasting my money working on this saw here. This saw was brought to me. A piston and cylinder was scored. And the guy, he just left it. He didn't want it back. Said it was junk. He didn't want to put no money into it. <clears throat> I was able to buy the piston and cylinder and the bearings and seals. And I have less than $45 in it.
So I'm going to do the bearing pockets also. Just a, a real light amount in the bearing pockets. So I figured for, you know, $45, I will either try to sell it for, you know, 80 or so, make a little bit of money off of it, or I know there's some elderly people in town that, you know, kind of hard off. Maybe I'll give it to them if they're looking for something. Or <clears throat> the um, local fire department has a yearly yard sale. Um, actually, the, the village has a yearly yard sale. And um, the local fire department that I've, I am actually a member of, we do a tenderloin fry and we, we sell some stuff for donations so that we um, can run our fire department. Uh, I might just put it on, on the table up there and whatever it sells for, that would be the, the donation for the, the fire department. Okay. So now, there's the exhaust. Here's the intake. Ring ends on the piston, on the pin. And there's something else I like about these saws. <laughs> they go right together. I will run... Getting a little sloppy there. Way more than what I wanted. That is some nasty stringy stuff. Go ahead and send the send the piston home. Now there's where the seals went down in the case, it kind of scraped a little bit off. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just kind of removing the little bit of excess that come off them seals. Okay. I don't believe it matters how this clamshell goes on, but I did mark it. I've got a little reference mark right there. I just used a, a file, made a little mark. And before I took this off the original cylinder, I've done the same thing there. So just put the two reference marks together. Okay. 
Now it's time to set this engine in its final resting spot. The bolts actually come up through the bottom of the case. Put a little bit of Loctite on these bolts. These aren't really sealing anything, but also don't want them backing out. So I'll put Loctite clear around them. Board on that one. Well, probably should have been more prepared here. socket on my nut driver. Okay, here we go. Okay, there, that one's in. Not tight, just snug. Now I can get it turned upside down and it'll hold in place. I'll do a cross pattern. Should have been a little more prepared. Don't have my ratchet now. Ratchet and a short extension. Good and snug. I'm going to do an X pattern. You don't want to go so much you pull the threads in the base of the cylinder, but you want it good and snug. Okay. See where I've got 1184 pushed out there. You could just leave that there if you wanted to. I mean, it's just a cosmetic thing. As you're looking around, 
I've got good push out all the way around. Good push out there. Good push out of, along the front there. Again, you really don't have to do this. It's just a cosmetic thing all it is, but Okay, well that's all we're going to do today. Make sure the piston goes up and down, which it does. I'll put the piston at top dead center. And I'll put the spark plug in it. Just to keep dirt out of it. I'll just lay a rag over the top of it. But we're done for today. Uh, I'll get this and posted. And as I come back and do some more of the build, I'll, I'll show some more parts of it. But I wanted to do the clamshell assembly, get it on film. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some people out there that may or may not um, be sure how to do a clamshell. Pretty straightforward. Um, okay, that's it. Hope you all enjoyed. See you in the next video.